All right, let's jump into it. So we're going to be talking about user properties in Copilot Studio. But first, just a little bit about me. I'm Matt Jemison. I've got my bachelor's in computer graphics. I've been doing a lot in IT now for actually 20 plus years, playing all kinds of different roles from architect to managing director. I love a lot of different programming languages, and I actually got started with all the Microsoft stuff inside Microsoft 365 before it was 365 with SharePoint 2007 back in 2008. And finally, I am the head of the Intelligent Solutions and Custom 365 apps at Takeda Pharmaceuticals, where I get to work with a lot of great people like Chris Kent and Hugo Bernier. So that is a little bit about me. And I am an MVP in the biz app space for Copilot Studio and Power Automate. So our scenario today is really pretty simple. Right now, if you're looking at Copilot Studio, you're going to get out of the box several user-based properties. You're gonna get things like the display name of the user that's logged in, their email, first name, last name, et cetera. And it's really helpful because it helps you create a personalized experience. So if you wanna call somebody by their name, when you output a message, you can do that. If you need someone's email address or user ID to send to Power Automate or do something with, you can do that too which is awesome. The purpose really though of what we're gonna be looking at is what about other things? What if I have other properties that I would like to be able to use as we start to think about just building more and more generative AI based journeys and even just what we saw, what if I wanted to understand maybe where someone was located so that I could by default start to pass those properties in? We just wanna create really more of a personalized experience. So our goals and what we're gonna look at quickly today, one, we want to extend those available user properties across topics so that we can use them wherever and whenever we need to. Two, we want to be able to add new properties in the future. So the idea is that right now we're going to pull in four new properties, but what if there are other things that we want to pull in later? The idea is it should be flexible. And then last but not least, we don't want to go get these properties more than we need to. So this idea of caching and not having to, every time someone is referencing one, we go get it, right? So we want to keep it. All right, that is it as far as slides go. That's it, it's over. All right, but the demo just begins. So we're going to go ahead and create a new copilot and we're going to call this. We will call this user demo. And we're going to pick off the lesson topics. We're just going to avoid that. Give it a second here. And once our copilot is out of the oven, we will get started. And so while we're waiting for this, I have already built a power automate flow to save some time. And I'm calling that flow ensure user. All I'm doing is, is I'm passing in the user email address of the user that's logged in. I'm using just the out of the box, get user profile and power automate. I'm compiling an object that has properties where I'm going to bring in their city, their state, their country and their department. So right now these are four properties that are pretty common across environments, but are not properties that are going to be available by default. And then last thing I do is I essentially turn that into a string and send it back to Power Virtual Agents or Copilot Studio. Now, the important thing to note here is, is that there are only three kinds of types of variables I can send back or send in, text, numbers, and Booleans. So in this way, since I'm working with more of a complex object, I'm gonna go to default text, and then we'll see what we do with it on the other side to make it work more like an object again. Okay, so now we've actually got our bot and it's ready to go. And so the first thing we're gonna do is create a new topic from Blink can call this whatever we want. I like to call ensure user because I'm ensuring that we have the information about the user that we need. And so I'm going to call an action and let's we'll look at that ensure user. So that's the one that we need. I'm going to pass in again, the logged in user's email address. So let's find that and just click that, which is good. And then now I've got by default an output and it's going to be this user object. And it's gonna be named after the output variable there as well. The first thing I want to do is one, I'm going to make this global. And then the other thing, so now I've got a string, right? And that's helpful, but again, if I want to work with it as a property-based thing, I need to do more. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy and paste something else from another screen. And let's see here, let's paste and see if that works. Okay. So now I'm creating a new global dot user record. And what we can see I'm doing here is I'm actually going to take that string that's coming back from Power, Power Automate and I'm going to parse it. And then I'm going to essentially bring back the text versions of the city, the state, the country, and the department. 
The thing about it is at this point, and this gets back to the caching, is if we were to reference this topic every time we wanted to get this information, right now it would go call Power Automate and bring all that information in. This we're not going to actually do that. We're never actually going to reference this topic, though. What we're going to do is is something that I think is not necessarily well documented or understood, but Power Virtual Agents or Cobot Studio has the ability to tell you tell someone that this variable needs to get its value from this node on this topic if it doesn't have a value. So we're going to do a little bit of magic here to make that work. So the first thing we're going to do is we're clicking on the string that comes back and we can see the reference here coming from ensure user. We're going to click this and we're going to say get the value from this node if it's empty. This is going to be the key that when any other things reference global.user object in Copilot Studio sees, hey, I don't have a value for that yet. It's going to say then you need to go here and you need to get it. This is a critical step. There are other ways you could do this. You could reference this topic inside of every other topic. You could do a condition, see if it's blank, but doing it this way, it's actually a lot more silent and it's easier. And I'm going to show you at the end of the demo, something with generative actions where we know we can't reference topics, that it's just going to work better. So I'm basically saying you're going to get your value here if anything references it. And then the other key here is with this particular variable, the same thing, the right, and this is the one that we really honestly care about because this is the one that's got the typed object. So this one is already actually set up because of the way I copy and pasted it in here. And so it's saying the same thing, right? I need to get the value from this particular node. What's going to happen is we're going to reference this thing. This thing is going to reference that thing. And so it's going to, at that point, say, oh, I need to call this flow to get that information. But when it has a value, this topic's not going to get called. This flow is not going to get called, and it's only going to be done once. When the session expires, we're going to be able to go get and refresh the values. But otherwise, we're actually never calling this topic. And in fact, because of that, you might say, well, I don't if I'm not calling this topic. And and what if I want to make sure that I never call this topic? We can even go in here to the trigger and we can say this is just going to be a redirect. The reason I'm doing this and suggesting it is when we turn on dynamic chaining, that's going to take over for the trigger phrases that we have. And that's going to be the LLM taking descriptions for all of the topics and trying to say, based on what the user said, which one of these should I go to? I don't ever want it to call this topic. Literally, the only reason this topic exists is the creation and execution of the flow to the string variable and then parsing to the object variable. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save on that. And then once that's saved, then we will start. And because we've typed out all of our different values down here, once we're finished, we should be able to reference them. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to the greeting topic. And so we can say, let's actually do the start conversation topic because that's what we're seeing over here. So I'm going to add a new message and I'm going to reference and I can see I see that you're in and then we're just we're going to say that we want to the country that someone's in. Right. So again, right now, there's nothing I've done anywhere that actually calls that or would set that. It's all handled in those variable settings and saying you need to get your value from here. So we've saved it. We're going to go ahead and refresh it. And then what's happening is you're going to see just a little bit of a delay. And the reason for that is it's actually going and it's now calling that Power Automate flow. And in fact, if I go over here and refresh this, and we'll go ahead and we don't need to make any saves here. If I look at my history run, then I should see something. Look, five seconds ago, it got called. And now if I go back over here, I see that you're in the United States. So we've already got the values. We can use them wherever we want. Now, the last thing that we're going to do is just to give you an idea of what could you do with this and with generative AI, we're going to add an action and we're going to go to the MSN weather. And so the idea for this is that we want to be able to show someone the weather where they live. And if we know where they live, we don't need to ask them where that is. So we're going to add just the MSN weather action, which is a great one for sort of demonstrating this capability. And we're going to make a few changes. So we're going to edit for one on the units here. We actually don't want to have that be asked. We don't. We just want to make sure that this is going to be. Let's see here. If I click this, we want to set that to I because we want things in Fahrenheit. So 
that's up to you. You could certainly not do that and you could have it prompt it. But a lot of times I think based on where users are, that may work best. Now, the location. Again, normally we might say, how's the weather in California? How's the weather here or there? But we want to just understand, well, they're in a certain place, so we'd rather show them. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to say set as a value. And I'm going to now pull that back up, go to formula, and I'm going to do the concatenation function. And I'm going to say global.user.city. And then I'm going to put a comma and a space. And then I'm going to say global.user.state. And again, I've got that nice IntelliSense. And so I'm going to save that. And I'm just going to click Save. And I'm going to go ahead and click Finish. And once this is done, there's one other thing that we need to do, which is to make sure that dynamic chaining is actually turned on. So I'm going to go over to Settings. I'm going to go over to Generative AI. And I'm going to wait for this page to load. I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to say dynamic chaining with generative actions is on. This is what allows the bot again to determine where a user should be routed based on what they say and not rely on you having to build trigger phrases. And all of this could still be done if we built a weather topic and we triggered that off of what the user said. We could absolutely do that. But what we want to have is the experience of We've got these actions and we just want to have them called automatically based on what someone says. OK, so now with that, we'll just refresh the conversation one more time. And we're going to go ahead and say, how's the weather? What I also want to do is I want so we can see here, right? What happened was the weather in Indianapolis, Indiana, that's where I'm at. And so that actually came in. And if we look at dynamic chaining, we can see it knew from this how's the weather that we wanted to call the get current weather tool we did a hard-coded i here for the units and you can see it pulled in that variable and even if we had never tried to say i see that you're in the us with that idea of getting the initialization set it's always going to go there when we need to and so you can use this in actions you can use this in topics you can use it wherever you need to so that's it in a nutshell mm -hmm.